Welcome to episode 33 of the Becoming Mind Strong podcast. And today we're talking about a mindset shift that we need to make if we want to achieve a long term goal. It's in our nature where if you're, especially if you're a very goal oriented person, or if you're working towards a goal that's just further out, we tend to get so stuck on a measure of success that's solely reaching that goal. And the problem with this, even if you are that goal oriented person, the problem with this is that when it's a big goal or it's a far off goal, that can be a recipe for frustration. That can be a recipe for giving up. So today we're diving into this mindset shift that can get us through those rough points of, yes, this is my endpoint goal, but by focusing on this instead, it's going to keep me on that course until I get there. Check it out. Welcome to Becoming Mind Strong, the official podcast of Mind Strong Fitness. My name is Rachel. I'm the owner and head coach of Mind Strong Fitness, and I am here to teach you truth. No more bullshit, no more point systems, no more shakes, no more raps. This is math and science, and we're going to learn how to do it together. Ready? Let's rock and roll. So I was watching a friend get coached the other day, and this friend is a professional bodybuilder, which I recognize that most of us, including myself, that is not our aspiration. But hearing this comment stuck with me and inspired this podcast episode. The coach said, it's called bodybuilding, not body build, because there's not a definitive outcome here. What we're looking to do is to improve our body along the way. And yes, there's competitions and yes, there's prizes, but the goal here is in the building. And that's where the name comes from. And I thought that was just such a genius statement. I love that. And this is something that, again, even if our aspirations are not to be a professional bodybuilder, this mindset shift is so relevant to so many of us. I'll give you an example. If your goal is to lose 150 pounds, that is a definitive goal. There's an end point to that goal, right? In that case, there is a body build, so to speak. There's an end goal that we want to reach. However, if that is the only focal point of this goal is lose 150 pounds, you are setting yourself up for a world of frustration because the path from where you currently are to 150 pounds lighter is not only a long path, but it's going to be filled with ups and downs and roadblocks. So the thing that we need to focus on, the mindset shift here for us to make is in the ING, is in the building, the body building. And again, the body building is an example with the focus of this mindset shift is in the ING, it's in the doing. And that's what we're gonna dive into today is the mindset shift between focusing on the end result goal and focusing on the process. And this is a topic like most mindset topics, if we're honest, right? Most mindset topics, we're gonna to address from the standpoint of health and fitness. But the reality is this is true of anything, right? If you own your own business, you know that there, the end goal is not a seven figure business. That may be a goal you have, but if that is your only measure of success, you are setting yourself up for some serious failure. And the reality is you're probably not going to stick with it long enough to get there because the path from just starting a business, the day you launch your website to a seven figure business is a very rough one filled with falling flat on your face. <laughs> if your goal is to lose X amount of pounds, same answer. If your goal is to find the man or woman of your dreams and get married and have three kids, cool, great goal to have if that's for you. And there's a lot of steps between that. We got to go on a first date. We got to fall in love. We got to buy a house. There's a lot of steps to get from point A to point B. And the problem for a lot of us is that we use that end goal as the only measure of success. If I don't lose 150 pounds, I have not hit my goal. If I'm not married with three kids, I have not hit my goal. If my business is not at seven figures, I have not hit my goal. And every time we stumble along the way, we have seen it as failure. Here's the mindset shift. We are going to shift to the ING. We are going to shift to the doing. I'll give you an example. Your goal is to lose 150 pounds. We're going to stick with that one. You decide to do it by tracking macros. If you don't know what tracking macros are, go back in this podcast. There are episodes that dive deep into what this is. Go to my website and check it out. Google it. There's a million ways to figure out what macros are. For the purposes of this example, we're going to say that your path to losing those 150 pounds, the end goal, is by tracking macros. 
on a daily basis, we do not give a shit about those 150 pounds. We wake up in the morning, you track breakfast, success. You have a snack, you track it in your food tracking app, success. The end of the day hits, you have tracked an entire day of food, success. Tomorrow we wake up, we get to make a choice, right? We talked earlier in the season about making the power of choice. There's no should, shouldn't, there's choice. You choose to track today, you track your food, success. The next day you don't track your food. Something happens, it's your best friend's birthday. You have some cake, you go out for mimosas. Does that mean you're a failure? Does that mean you're never gonna lose 150 pounds? Of course not. The success here is that we get right back on the next day. We are shifting our focal point from the end goal to the ING, to the doing. Here's what happens. Every time we are successful, not 150 pound loss successful, actionable steps along the way successful our brain releases all those feel-good chemicals. And as we talked about, we are pleasure-seeking creatures. We want those chemicals. So the more we do it, the better we feel. And the better we feel, the easier it gets to keep making this choice. Now, here's the beautiful part. In the context of macro tracking, and we'll do some more examples where the context is the same, it's math and science. It works, right? There's no question of if I track my macros every day, am I gonna lose 150 pounds? unless you have a terrible macro coach or you did it yourself, you don't know what you're doing. If your numbers are set correctly, you will lose the 150 pounds. We can't say how long it's going to take. We can't say what that journey is going to look like, but it's math and science and it's going to work. So we don't need to worry about those. We don't give a shit about those 150 pounds. Our measure of success, did I track my macros? Did I get back on when I had a day where I was off? That is the only thing we care about in this journey is the doing. Because the more consistent we are, the more we are, we are rolling that snowball down the hill instead of pushing that boulder up a cliff. And the sooner we are going to get to that end goal, which we don't even care about at the moment. Let's take a non-health and fitness example, right? You decide you want to build a seven-figure business. It's day one. You launched your website. If in your brain, you have decided that your business is not successful until you hit seven figures, you may as well quit right now. I'm, I mean that with all the love in the world, you may as well quit because the amount of shit that you are going to beat yourself up with along that journey, you're never going to stick with it. We are pleasure seeking creatures. We don't want to sit there and hear every day how unsuccessful we are, how nothing's working, how you're not doing this right. You're never going to make it to that, that long-term end goal if you're feeling like crap every day. So instead, we come up with a plan. We say, okay, I bet if I spend an hour of my day working on growing my social media, an hour of my day working on my program planning, an hour a day working with my business coach, an hour a day delegating to my virtual assistant, whatever your business plan looks like, that's your measure of success. That's your ING. That's your process and your doing. The other stuff will come. As long as you are continuing to tweak and adjust and take good advice and do it the quote unquote right way, if there is a quote unquote right way in your industry, the rest will come. But by only focusing on that end goal, you're never going to make it there. It's too far off. When I say it's too big a goal, that doesn't mean that you need to set the bar lower. It just means that focusing that far in the future is it's too far away. It's too big for us to focus on on a daily basis. It might be there in the back of your mind. That's a great thing. You know, this is why we make vision boards. This is why we keep inspirational things around us. Because in the back of your mind, you might say, yep, putting in the work today because my goal is seven figures. But if that is your only measure of success, you are pushing that boulder up a hill. You are setting yourself up for a world of disappointment. We need to make a mindset shift that it is in the process. The process is our measure of success. Did I do what I said I was going to do to work on my business today? I did. Check. I did the next day. Check. I didn't the next day because I was just not feeling it and I needed a brain break. Cool. Got on the next day. Check. We can rest assured that if we are continuing on, if we are learning, if we are growing, if we are adjusting, the end goal will get here. And for so many people, this is such a, again, like most of these things, this is a simple concept, but it doesn't mean it's easy because our brains have been wired to be goal oriented. And that's great. It's great to have goals. I'm a huge believer in writing down goals in making those vision boards in doing what you need to do to get your eye on the prize. The problem is when the prize is the only measure of success, it is not going to be impactful enough. 
It is not going to be in your face enough on a daily basis for you to stick with it. So in that initial example of the bodybuilder, it's not called body build. It's called body building because we are focusing on the process, right? If your only measure of success as that bodybuilder is to win first place in a competition, guess what? You're going to quit after your first competition. That's not what it's about. It's the process. It's go, did I go to the gym every day? Did I stick to my nutrition plan? Did I do my stretching this morning? If you can check those those boxes, then yeah, one day you could win a competition. You probably will. But that's not what, it's not called body build. It's in the ING. It's in the doing. So I'm going to encourage you, again, like most things we start with just shining the light of awareness. Take a look at some of your goals. Maybe you have one for your health and fitness goals. Maybe you have one for your business goal. Maybe you have one for your relationship goal. It doesn't matter what it is. It's about you and your life. Take a couple minutes. You can write it down. You can think about it. You can journal about it. There's no right or wrong. Think about your goals. Think about what the end result goal is. Losing 150 pounds, building a seven-figure business, being married with three kids and two dogs and a white picket fence, whatever it is, think about what that goal is. Then think about the process. What is the plan to get to that goal? What is a measurable tool every day or every week that is going, that is almost guaranteed to get you to that goal? Sometimes there's things we can't guarantee. For things like macros, as a coach, I'm not going to say I, I guarantee it because I could get sued, but <laughs> it's math and science, right? As a business owner, it's not guaranteed. And you can be fairly confident about it as long as you are on the right path and you are taking the right advice and you're tweaking and adjusting. The point is, what is the work that I can focus on each and every day? What is in my power? What is in my plan? What is my measure of success in the doing that will lead to the goal with time? Because now we are flowing with human nature. Now we wake up in the morning, we say, cool, what is the step I can take today to work closer to that goal? We either did it or we didn't. If we didn't, it didn't mean we were unsuccessful. It means we get back on the next day and that's our measure of success and we keep going. When we approach goals like this, we now roll that snowball down the hill. We now live from a place of, ooh, that felt good to accomplish my goals, right? All those feel good chemicals are flowing through me. I want more of that. What else can I do? What else can I do? And you'll notice, here's the kicker to all this, that goal more times than not is going to be achieved faster. Because again, we are pleasure seeking creatures. So beating ourselves up every day saying, why aren't you making seven figures? You suck at this. Your last launch failed. Nothing about that is motivating us to do more in our business. Nothing about that is putting out the energy into the world to attract our ideal clients, right? Nothing about that, especially in health and fitness, is encouraging us to stay on this journey that can already be uncomfortable. But we're, when we're doing it from a place where we're releasing those feel-good chemicals, where we're celebrating ourselves, where we're saying, hell yeah, I, I tracked my macros today. I got a 30-minute workout and that feels good. And my brain is sending all those feel-good chemicals to my body. Now we speed up the process because the choice the next day isn't so hard. And the next day it isn't so hard. And then we start adding to what we're doing because we want more of it. And this is how we look back down the line and say, holy crap, I am here living my dream. I lost those 150 pounds. I started that seven figure business. And the reason I did is because it may have been in the back of my mind, but it wasn't the be all end all. When we focus on the doing, when we focus on the process, when we focus on the ING, our dreams become our actual reality. For more help with habits and mindset trainings, go check out my book, Becoming MindStrong on Amazon or read more about it at www.mindstrongfitness.com.